This recording is the first in a series of recordings on trigonometric integrals where the integrand is a power of sine x multiplied by a power of cos x. In this first recording, we look at the case where at least one of these functions is raised to an odd power. That is, we're looking at an integral of sine to the power of mx times cos to the power of nx dx, where either m or n, or both of them, is odd. And this process is best illustrated by looking at a specific example. Let's suppose we wanted to find the integral of cos cubed x times sine to the power of 7x with respect to x. The first step is to break off a single factor of the trig function that is to an odd power. But wait a minute. In this case, both of them are to an odd power. So which one do we choose? Well, in this case, we could actually choose either. But in practice, it's simplest to pick the one that's to the lowest power, which in this case is cos x, since that is just to the power of 3. So in this case, we're going to be rewriting cos cubed x as cos squared x times cos x. But for convenience, I'm actually going to put the split off factor cos x at the end of this expression, for reasons that will soon become clear. All right, now the next step is we then use the well-known identity sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1 to replace the remaining part of that function, that is the part of cos x that we have left here, once we've broken off the single factor, in terms of the other trigonometric function, which will be in terms of sine x in this example. So that means we're wanting to rewrite cos squared x in terms of sine x in this case. Well, we can work out what that will look like by simply rearranging our identity. And if we rearrange that, we get cos squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x, meaning that that will then replace this part of our expression. That is, we will then find that the integral of cos squared x sine to the power of 7x cos x dx will be rewritten as the integral of 1 minus sine squared x times sine to the power of 7x times cos x dx. And you'll notice now what we have is a reasonably complicated expression in terms of powers of sine x, and that's then multiplied by cos x dx. So we can now actually use integration by substitution to evaluate this integral. The reason being the derivative of sine x is just cos x, so if we let u, let's say, be equal to sine x, we have to rewrite everything in terms of u and du if we're going to use substitution. So let's see what du is. Well, the derivative of u with respect to x is just cos x. So du is cos x dx, which is why we can use substitution, because wherever we see sine x in this expression, it'll be replaced with u, and the cos x dx will just be replaced with du which will then give us an integral that it's much easier to evaluate. All right, so let's rewrite all of this then. We're now going to say that 1 minus sine squared x, that's just 1 minus u squared. Sine to the power of 7x, that's just u to the power of 7. Cos x dx, that's just du. And this integral we've got here, which is basically just in terms of powers of u, that looks a lot easier to deal with. Before we evaluate that, we now need to expand the brackets, so that will become u to the power of 7 minus u to the power of 9 that we're wanting to integrate with respect to u. Now it's just going to be u to the power of 8 divided by 8 minus u to the power of 10 divided by 10 plus c when we're working out that integral. Now what do we do? Well, recall that u was sine x. We simply need to substitute that back in now. 
So that's just going to be sine to the power of 8x divided by 8 minus sine to the power of 10x divided by 10 plus c. I'm just writing it out in full in terms of the expression we started with. This would be the answer to our problem of evaluating this integral. So in summary, this was a case where at least one of the powers of sine or cosine was odd. In this case, in actual fact, they both were. So it was easiest to choose to work with the lower power, which was our cos to the power of 3x. We broke off a factor of that, cos x. We then rewrote everything else in terms of the other trigonometric function, sine x. By using our trigonometric identity, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. This then allowed us to use integration by substitution, with u being sine x and the cos x dx part being du. And as a result of that, we were then able to determine the answer. So that is an initial example of integrating trigonometric functions when your integrand is a power of sine x times a power of cosine x. You might now want to look at our next maths cast in this series where we do another example involving an odd power of one of these functions but where it's just a little bit more complicated.